Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction and the armor wizard, Zap Zap. We've got a relic here today, a behemoth, a very interesting body armor plate in full transparency was donated by one of my good followers, Mr. John H. and his crew, a big thank you to him. But what we have here today is from Tenkit or Tenkati. This is their Liba plate. This 11 by 14 panel here weighs 10 pounds, or for across the pond, 4.536 kilograms. It is an 11 by 14 model. It is 1.185 inches thick, or 30.07 millimeters. It is multi-curve. You can see all those curves there. As I mentioned, it was born in 2007. You can see how huge this thing is. Now, what makes this particular plate very interesting is that instead of having a monolithic or tile array strike face, there are essentially a bunch of a little alumina, uh, which is a type of ceramic pellets inside this plate that actually make up the strike face. This has some kind of epoxy coating on it to help bind them all together. There's not a whole lot of information on this particular body armor that I can find online. I've read that they use this system in vehicular armor and that it is somewhat user repairable. I guess if you got shot in the field and some of the pellets blew away, you could put more pellets in there and epoxy it in place. Not sure about all of that. So we're gonna see what we can do to terrorize this plate today. Now, if you are a newcomer to my channel, this is gonna be a very long-winded spiel, but over here we do a lot of things different than most other channels do when it comes to testing body armor. Since this is a rifle plate, we shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance. We also shoot at zero degrees because that is considered worst case scenario. I'm all about worst case because in the real world, if you add you know, 100, 200, 400 yards to that or shorter barrel length, at that distance, you're gonna lose velocity. So we know that if we stop M2AP in this plate going 2880 feet per second at 45 feet, in the real world, if someone shoots you at 400 yards, that's gonna be a very survivable hit. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina, number one clay donated by Chavant. That acts as our compressible media so we can get an idea of back face. Now, it's only 45 to 50 degrees outside today, so the clay's been heating up in my little insulated igloo down there but we're not gonna have a true representation of back face. That's what the actual NIJ is for. And because of the size of this, I'm not sure how it's gonna fit in my clay briefcase. So today we're mainly just trying to see what kind of penetrations, if any, we get out of it. We also use a chronograph whenever possible. We have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX. And again, per the NIJ, there is a drop test that you subject all ceramic strike face armor to where you drop it on its face two times from a rig. We've done that even though that this particular plate is not an NIJ plate. I figured we'd do it anyways. And then we mark a DT to indicate that we've done the drop test. And then if it passes a torque test, that's where you take the corners of the plate and you try to twist it and listen for cracks. We mark a TQ on there if it passed. And since the construction of this plate is different, I didn't hear any cracking on it. Finally, we put a giant spreadsheet here at the beginning that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. And in the end, we fill all them out with the velocity and whether they're penetrated, add any notes. And we like to do a teardown because I'm very interested in what the guts of this particular plate looks like. Now, I'll apologize about the change of scenery. The excavation company brought a few loads of dirt to extend our berm. And because it's been wet outside, they haven't come back out to move it yet. So we had to set up a temporary table here and move off to the right here. Hopefully you can read everything. If not, I apologize. But since this is supposed to be basically a multi-hit capable level four plate, we brought out our 300 wind chad here. We have four rounds of M2 armor piercing. That is what the NIJ level four spec is. It's 163, 165 grain full metal jacket with a very large and hard armor piercing core inside. Then to go a little above and beyond, We've got M80A1 in our 300 wind mag case. That is a 130 grain copper core with a very large arrowhead steel tip there. And our plus P plus or 300 wind chad M2AP load. We've got our 24 inch TC compass. We've got it back in our Boyd stock. We had taken this to the gun dealer or gun store and had them bed the stock in. So hopefully we stopped cracking it. Got a JK armament rifle kit up front. We'll take the four shots of the standard pressure first.
We're looking for 2880 feet per second. Might be a little bit over. Well, I can't get that in there, hold on. So this one should be in the top left. We were almost 100 feet per second over spec. Why is my, oh, there we go. The plate is smoking. We'll put this one to the far right of that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see down there, but our plate is having fun. I'm gonna place this guy on one of the extreme sides. Uh oh. I see a giant hole in my clay. That's not good. Oh, it's because I pulled that guy. We'll go off to the right on this side. I always hate to foreshadow things, folks, but strike those 300 wind chad shots. We're gonna go to our 308 next. We've got a 24 inch Savage Access 110 tactical left hand eject. Have the M Carbo flat face trigger in here. Very nice little trigger kit. We've got two rounds of M80 ball, that is the NIJ level three and upcoming RF one and two threat spec, 2780 feet per second, 150 grain full metal jacket. Then we have M14A1 API, that's a World War II armor piercing incendiary round in 30 at six. We've loaded in 308. Then we have M80A1, that is the US military's evolution to M80. It's 130 grains with a copper core and steel penetrating tip. It's a green round, lead free, num nums. We'll take the API shot last, the M80A1 shot third, then our two ball shots first. So this should be slightly to the right of that carnage that we had. Same with this one. I'm just going to walk them right in the line. Now the M80A1. I'm going to place this one. I'm going to go one row up and to the right. Now, Mr. Flashy Flash. I'm going to put this one uh, to the right of the last M80 ball shot. Woo! And my brass is stuck. So much fire, so satisfying. We have two more AP threats in 308, and then maybe we'll throw some M855A1 at it. But we have some Portuguese M963 AP. Apparently their ball is M963, then the AP version was just de designated AP. And then we have some M61 or P80 black tip. This is early 50s AP load in 762 NATO. 150 grains, a very similar shaped core to M2 AP, but it's a little shorter and more sharpened. We'll take the port 963 AP shot first. We'll put that one probably dead center. M 
and then our plate is smoking down there. And then our M61 will place lower left. Nice. Now we'll finish off the plate with some 556. We've got our 22 inch TC compass with our turbo 556 up front, primary arms, silver line, four to 16 scope up top. We've got M855A1. This is US Army's current issue ball round. It is the evolution to M855. It's the enhanced performance round. 62 grains, copper core, hardened steel arrowhead tip. We've got six of those bad bama jamas here. We're losing a little bit of daylight, but I blocked the chronograph with a table and we are getting velocities off them. We're seeing right around 3100 to 3150 with this today. So I'm gonna place these in just a, real, a lot of compromised areas. This will be on the upper part of the plate. 3160. Then this will be all the way to the right. To be next to the M80 ball shot. We'll go all the way in the upper left hand corner. right hand corner and that's it all right folks i led you on long enough let's go see what we did not sure if we'll be able to tear this plate down but this is what our strike face is made out of little circular alumina spheres or whatever you want to call them pellets would be a better term the advantages to this particular plate design seems to be that all the damage is very localized and doesn't extend to other parts of the plate. But we didn't step up any of the threats because you'll see why in a moment. But our M855A1 shots, number one, two, and three. Our M2AP, one, two. Our M963AP, Portuguese, or Portugal, right there. Our M80A1, shot number one, right there. Our M2AP shot was over here, and you can see that it decimated my clay. Our standard M80 ball shots, number one and two. Our A1 shots, number one, two, or four, five, and six. Another shot of M2AP. Our API, Mr. Flashy Flash. And then our M61 AP was down here, or P80 black tip. Place those bets in the comments below. I got my helper hand back. He just got back from aerial yoga with the wife. Uh oh, Raggy. I'm not quite sure if this plate was rated for M2AP or not, but the reason we didn't go for any more hits of the plus P plus stuff is that we had penetrations on the first two and third hit. Now the fourth shot down here it looks like it did stop. All of our other hits though, it did stop those. We probably could have stepped up to the plus P plus M80A1, but I didn't want to chance it and destroy too much of this plate. Now our backing material is Aramid. We'll get this apart in a second, but it looks like we've got three different material types here at least. I will say from a strike face durability aspect, again, with these little pellets, it held up rather well, but I'm not sure why this would be rated for M2AP, unless maybe it wasn't. 
or maybe that extra 100 feet per second that I was getting was just too much for it. And on this shot over here, wasn't a fair hit. I must have pulled it, but it did kind of go this way and then out the side. I'll have to pick those pellets out. Our 5.56 threats didn't stand a chance against this plate. Well, luckily this plate came apart in three sections. Bonding doesn't seem to be a thing with this particular design, at least between the different types of layers. There's an outer ring here for perimeter for the backing material. Again, here are our little pellets and or spheres. That's a hard word for me to say. This way, they're approximately 397 thousandths. And then this way across that band, around 370. You can see there's quite a few of them in here. There's no foam on the back side. Then the next layer at approximately 440 thousandths is this polyethylene. It seems to be pressed pretty well together. It didn't come apart at least, mainly because it wasn't slowing any of the projectiles down. You can see that hit of M2AP was way too close to the edge. Probably should have pulled that one in a little tighter. There's the back side. You'll note that quite a few of the threats didn't make it in past our polyethylene. Our branding is likely that strip of color there. Then our final layer at 290 thousandths thick is some Aramid or Kevlar. Again, to confirm our penetrations, we're all three shots of M2AP. That one on the side obviously doesn't count because it veered off that way. Our M61 down here left quite a dimple. And then an interesting part here is there is the tip of the A1. If I can get it out, maybe not. Oh, I can't get it out, but that's there. A1's there. Another part of the A1. The M2 there. Another A1 shot. Some of this is making it past the polyethylene. And luckily, this aramid is there to catch it. Interesting design. I like the multi-hit capability of those little pellets, but they don't seem to do a very good job against our M2AP. Well, folks, if anything, these little pellets in our Leva plate from 10 kit may be confused as jawbreakers or candy for some, but in our testing, they won't be confused as M2AP busters. I'm just not sure if this particular plate design was not meant for M2 armor piercing. I know there is a tungsten M993 variant of this plate that's designed to stop multiple strikes of it, but whatever this particular composition was just didn't have it to stop M2 AP. Now our other loads, such as our API and the M80A1 and even our M855A1, had no trouble stopping this, although some of those rounds of A1 did make it into our Aramid backer. As far as any back face goes for the rounds it did stop, all of the polyethylene and aramid fibers that make up our backer did a very excellent job at controlling the amount of back face. I personally probably wouldn't seek this plate out as any means of current wear for personal protection, but your mileage may vary. It is your money. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because it's Sunday. I'm getting hungry. It's movie night. I think we're going to watch Holes. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various different ways to either contact me if you have any questions or support me. I have standard affiliate links for commission-based sales. They cost you nothing. I have some for like our Gators eyewear and all those funds essentially go back in the channel for procuring more ammunition because that's one of my larger expenses. Number two is my buddy John H and his crew who donated that plate for us to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.